I am joined by Rudy Molinick, an award-winning podcaster, writer, and storyteller, as well as a PhD candidate in geoscience at UW-Madison. With expertise spanning sea level change and science communication, Rudy brings a unique perspective on the vital role of sharing science with the broader public and how it can shape the relationship between science and society. Rudy, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So given your background in both scientific research and communication, why do you think it's important that we as a scientific community try and communicate our science to the broader public? I think that the, the key thing there is to remember who science is for. Um, like it's not necessarily for getting grant money or building a nice lab or just, and in some respects sometimes it is for the pure pursuit of knowledge, but really what science is for is for everyone, for the public. Um, and so communication is, is vital in bridging that, bringing science to the public, bringing it to the people who, who it is actually for. So right now we're obviously living in dynamic times, uncertain futures with the new administration taking office. So with this, how are ways that you are trying to use science communication to promote the continued advancement of science through these times? Yeah, I mean, I think people want to learn about science more now than ever. I think uh, there's, a, there's a huge appetite for it out there. And I think it's something that cro crosses all sorts of divides. Um, I think you can take people who disagree on just about everything if they live near a park or they go, there's a place that they love, geologists and people working on studying the earth have figured out something about that place that they'd be interested to learn. And it doesn't matter what else they think outside of that. But um, I think we're, we're lucky to be in a community of scientists here who, whose work is about our planet and I guess other planets too. That's so true. <laughs> but but th it's something we all share. Um, and so, yeah, I think in, in uncertain times like what's better than connecting to the places around you and um, yeah that's that's a big goal of mine is to help people do that. I love that yeah really understanding where you are why it's significant there are so many things that I'll talk to people about and they'll be like oh I didn't know that that's how this got here you know and just learning about what you're standing on and yeah. where you are and the significance of it is is really cool sometimes. Yeah. Um, so with you know, looking to the future and science. AGU24's theme this year is what's next for science. So what's your next for science? What are you looking forward to at this meeting? Yeah, maybe this sounds a little silly to say at a conference where probably most of the people are looking back in time, mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty amazing to be here around like what is the future of science and future of geology. That's why I, I come here from, from geology and I know AGU has a lot of other disciplines, but yeah, for a science that, that thinks about the past, I think the future is looking really cool. Um, I've been loving, yeah, all the sessions where there's early career researchers with people who are senior in their field having conversations through their talks. And um, so, I, yeah, I guess what I'm just looking forward to is like seeing what everyone's going to talk about next year yeah. based on what I've seen. Seen, yeah, you know, isn't that fun yeah. trying to predict that? Yeah. And thinking about, you know, what's next for science, specifically around, you know, science, tip, science communication and our, you know, interactions with the general public. Where do you think society can take science next? And where do you think science can take society? It's an, it's an awesome question because I think it's, it is a feedback right? loop. It's, yeah. a, it's a cycle. Like scientists should be responsive to what broader society is looking for, asking for, but society should be responsive to what scientists are learning. And I think what's fun for me as a, as a science writer, a science communicator, you get to be helping society hear what science is doing and science see what society is responding to that. Um, um, so yeah, in, in this self-centered world I've just created, <laughs> us science communicators are the ones who are making that wheel go round. That is awesome. Well, yeah, I think your perspective on this is really cool given your expertise in both research and your experience, you know, communicating science. How, how long have you been doing science communication with your podcast and all your other work? Yeah, I started the podcast, I think about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Yeah. Um, and it's just sort of, yeah, taken off from there. 
That's awesome. Well, thank you for all that you do for science communication, connecting science and society. So thank you for that and thank you for coming on today. Yeah, thanks for, for having me here.